stuff, if I'm looking at the right bit of paper, is uh, Steve Finbow. Uh, his, well, reads as follows. His novel, Balzac of the Badlands, will be published in October 2009. He's an editor at 3AM magazine and once worked for Allen Ginsberg. He's moving back to Tokyo, and to be honest, he can't pull any weight. <laughs> photo has been done by lovely Ben Cooper, who sadly is uh, in New York, no, not sadly for him. He's a visual artist and filmmaker whose works explore the recurring themes of storytelling, implied multiple narratives, the language and conventions of cinema, memory, history and travel. After this, we'll be taking a break for about a quarter of an hour to get the pints in. First time I've seen this photo, and it's fantastic because it's exactly what my story is. I write stories when I walk. So if I walk around cities, towns, not the countryside, I'm scared of cows, um, <laughs> then I'll stop on a bench or in a pub, mostly in a pub actually, uh, and just jot down notes. And then I'm, it's basically impressionistic, so I'll turn my note taking into paragraphs. Um, and this one's called, You Should Stop, I Have Something Important to Communicate, but, which I think all writers do, but we wouldn't do that in the street because that would be really embarrassing. Um, <laughs> they've knocked down the building where Kenneth Williams once lived. There's nothing to see now at the former flat at 8 Marlborough House, Osnaburg Street. The concrete, glass and steel, scri steel, sorry, steel skyscraper that would appear is a mere skeleton of memories and shadows. Squirrels mince across the grass. Two pigeons bask in the sun, looking like discarded slippers. Once there was a park keeper who knew the names of all the trees. What is name, a Japanese boy, on his way to the zoo once asked him. Jacaranda, the park keeper replied. The child frowned, grasped his mother's hand a little tighter. The canal resembles a brown tie a man has laid out on the bed with the intention of choosing between it and a grey one. He is just about to take from the wardrobe, and when the telephone rings and he is to go downstairs to answer it, it is his wife, and he assures her he will be there in no time at all, and yes, of course, he's going to wear the grey tie with his dark blue suit. She looks like an actress, but probably isn't. She could be a retired model. She wears sunglasses, even though it's overcast, a sweater draped over her shoulders, even though it's humid, work boots unlaced, even though it's doubtful she has just finished building a wall to keep her safe from people who pretend to be her fans. He could go in the doctor's surgery, but after he asks if his prescription is ready, he forgets, and so he thinks he will hold on until he gets to the ones in the park. But when he gets there, he remembers going there the last time he walked past the zoo, and doesn't want people to think he's gay, and so he'll walk to the toilets in the train station, or the ones in the town hall, where he has to go to pick up a copy of his marriage certificate that he needs to start divorce proceedings. <laughs> Magpies, thrushes, robins, blue tits, jays, crows, pigeons, blackbirds, emus, parrots, ducks, swans. A man who drinks in his local pub, a greengrocer, a bookseller, a woman who he has a crush on, a woman who he once slept with, once. Somebody he sure is a politician, but he can't remember his name. A dromedary, a batrian, a goat, some sheep. The urn is painted the colours of a Phrygian cow. It stands guard next to a round table. The table is painted green, as are the three chairs that surround it. Sitting on the chairs are three people of Asian descent. A woman in her, in her 60s, a woman in her 30s, and a young girl not more than 10 years old. They are, in turn, drinking coffee, looking at a map, eating an ice cream. A dog urinates against the, against the bench opposite. Every time he walks past this spot, he remembers a story he read in a national newspaper. He doesn't want to think about the story. It was one of violence in broad daylight. Everyone saw. No one stopped it. But he can't help himself. And every time he reaches the place where the memories begin, he tries to think of other things. Like Lego. Herons. Shiny beetleish cars on the blue agave sweep of the Westway. 
He is sure it is her, but the last time he saw her, she didn't have a tattoo, a barbed wire daisy chain around her butt right biceps. Yet her eyes are the blue of mischief, her small nose turned up, her full lips red as energy. The last time he saw her, he was hung over, waiting for a taxi to take him to work. She had just come from the pharmacist where she had collected a three month supply of contraceptive pills because she was leaving London to move to New Yorker. Some fathers play catch with their children by the gates of the park. The mothers sit in, on the grass, arranging blankets and boxes and plates and cutlery. Drink containers stand around or sprawl on the tartan. Plastic hinges of mineral water and orange juice. The fathers' faces are red, and the mothers look at their children, quietly willing them to grow up and leave home. <laughs> it is the last day of summer. White pieces of cloud float, o- float overhead, and nothing is redeemed in the dark bunkers of his mind. Sand in his eyes, the great tail fins of American cars drift by, then horses skewed to silent merry-go-rounds, a circus barker, a meat map of a cow, and he thinks of all the rainy days, the grey days, the rotting timbers of his terminal hut on the green fringed and sun gilded lagoon. It began to sparkle in the library, like shiny glucose bubbles, the colour of eau de cologne. And he realised that when he opened the book, the words on the recto and verso pages, sparse and black, looked like pubic hairs. And he felt as though he was looking between a woman's legs. And he ran his fingers along her spine, and she threw her head back and giggled. Thank you.